Hey guys, uh, here is going to be a video uh, of how to use modus ponens when you're doing these logical logical proofs. Uh, I know we kind of started this the other day, but given the certain circumstances that we're dealing with, uh, I thought maybe it would make sense to take just a little step back so we can take a couple steps forward. So we'll kind of review it and uh, hopefully it'll ring some bells for you and it'll make more sense. Uh, the first one we learned about was called modus ponens. And that was, uh, it's Latin. I think it's sort of uh, the, the mood of a f affirmation or something that was to be affirmed. Uh, but what does that mean? Well, that means if you have the conditional statement, if P then Q, and you have the simple statement P, what modus ponens says is you can conclude, well, if P then Q, and you have P, therefore Q. So in, you know, in context, that would be, you know, if I'm going to the park, then I'm going to read quietly. So I'm telling you that if I go to the park, I'm going to read quietly. And then I tell you, well, you know what, guys, I'm going to the park. And then you would say, oh, well, then you must be reading quietly. That's essentially what modus ponens allows us to conclude. So this is this is basically a rule that we can use. So how would we use it? Well, if I were to give you, let's just sort of change it up a little bit as an example. Let's say I give you R. Uh, implies S, and I'm giving you R, and we're going to try to prove S. So to set up the proof, we kind of set up kind of a two-column proof like in geometry. One side sort of your statements, and one side is your justifications. Uh, we don't necessarily have to write the headers, but that's essentially what it is. Statements or reasons, if you want, justifications, however you want to put it. This is basically, you know, what your um, stating is going to be true, and this is going to be the justification as to why. So you always start with your premises. So R to S is a premise, and I usually abbreviate that, you know, with just PR, but for the first one, I'll write it out. Premise two is simply R, so that's also a premise. And now we're trying to figure out the proof. Well, this one, you know, I started out with one relatively simple. The key, the, the reason why I use this example is because the letters don't actually matter. You know, the fact that this is P and this is Q doesn't change the fact that, um, you know, the format is the same. So here's how I usually like to describe it. If this, then that. We have this, therefore that. We have if this, then that. We have this, therefore we're trying to prove that. So this one would simply be S because of steps one and two using modus ponens. And that's how you would write it. You could just abbreviate modus ponens. You could even abbreviate these. I just didn't this time. All right, I'm gonna have you try one now, or we'll do it together. Uh, so here's another example. So suppose we have uh, A implies B or C, and I'm giving you A, and we're going to try to conclude B or C. So let's set up the proof. So one is going to be A implies B or C. That's the premise. Two is going to be A. That's another premise. And then three. So since this implies that and we have this, we can conclude that B, B, C using one and two modus ponens. So this example is showing you that it doesn't matter that there's multiple terms here. It's still, throw a pencil here. It's still a this and a that. I know some people in class the other day when we were doing this to try to sort of substitute in their minds, you know, this is essentially the P and this is essentially the Q. So if P then Q, well, we have P, therefore, this is, you know, we have Q. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. Just sometimes it helps people to kind of visualize the original. But that's the idea for modus ponens. Okay. Now we'll try another one. So let's try this. Here's a premise. Here's a premise. Here's another premise. And this time we're going to try to conclude R. Okay. So let's set up our proof and see if we can get it. So we just kind of have to recopy the premises to start. So premise P to Q is a premise. Q to R is a premise. Oops, premise. 
and now we need to figure out our next step. Now, this is the first example where um, you know you can't just jump right to the conclusion because look at what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove R. There's nothing given to me currently that allows me to conclude R by itself. So we have to come up with something else. Well, hopefully you noticed in steps one and two that they actually gave us two of the pieces of the puzzle we need to use modus ponens. Oops, cut off there. To use modus ponens. We have if P then Q, we have P, right? And it doesn't matter that these are in a different order, right? They're still premises. They're both accepted as like given, right? This is essentially what's given. So we can do them in any order we want. So if P then Q and we have P, we should be able to conclude Q. And that would be steps one and two using modus ponens. Okay. So now that we've proven Q, we can, oh, hang on, my cat's in the way. Oh, one sec. All right. Now that we have Q, we can use Q for the rest of the proof. It's basically been proven. Now that's not the official last step because we're trying to prove Q, but it's new information that we can conclude that we can use. So now that we have Q, what can we conclude? Well, looking at steps three and four, if we have Q implying R and we have Q, therefore R. That's using steps three and four, and that is also using modus ponens. Okay, so the key is to look at what's given, figure out what you're trying to prove, and then utilize you know, whatever you can within what's given to come up with new things that will lead you to this conclusion. Sometimes it's relatively quick, you know, if it's a more basic problem like these, um, and then sometimes it can get more complicated. All right, so there's your, um, you know, hopefully that's enough uh, examples to kind of get you going. I'm going to put a few problems for you to try, and uh, just let me know if you have any questions. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.